And now, somewhat live from coast to coast, thanks to the magic of modern technology, it's the SS United States Gala 68 Variety Show. Brought to you by the SS United States Conservancy and its West Coast chapter in celebration of the 68th anniversary of the Superliner's record-shattering maiden voyage. July 3rd, 1952. There's gaiety in the air at Manhattan's Pier 86, where the colossal SS United States takes on her very first passengers. Her engines are already purring in anticipation of what promises to be a record-shattering inaugural dash across the unpredictable North Atlantic. The largest and fastest superliner ever built in her namesake's country, the soon-to-be-fabled Big U is 107 feet longer than the Titanic and taller by <laughs> three miles. And that's all we can tell you about her design because the rest is classified strictly hush-hush by the United States government. With those rakish red, white, and blue funnels, the largest ever fitted onto any liner, this great symbol of national pride epitomizes the American can-do spirit. In fact, every state of the Union, all 48 of them, contributed in some way to her patriotic design and construction. From her swanky first-class suites to her luxuriously decorated public rooms, the SS United States will carry 1,660 passengers in safety, speed, and style to La Havre, France, then on to Southampton, England. That's her mighty horn, signaling the start of her momentous sprint across the pond. Join us now on this virtual voyage into history with your hosts, the co-chairs of the SS United States Conservancy's West Coast Chapter, David Perry and Mark Perry. No relation. Ahoy! Per Permission to come aboard, Captain? Oh, listen, Mark, you are the co-chair of the SS United States Conservancy West Coast chapter. You don't need my permission. Come aboard. I know. Look, I, I'm just looking for a nautical catchphrase. You've got the whole Ahoy thing. You've, you've cornered the market on Ahoy. That's David Perry's thing. It's your signature. So I'm hoping to find my own nautical catchphrase tonight. So tonight's show is inspired by all those great variety shows of the 50s like the Colgate Comedy Hour and your hit parade, both of which broadcast episodes from the SS United States while she was at her home pier 86 in New York. And also the Red Skelton show. Now Red Skelton was a former passenger on the SS United States because we're gonna connect everything we can to the United States tonight. And in fact, Red Skelton famously almost caused the ship to sail late once because he was buying drinks for and entertaining the crew pier side and that's a story that my dear friend Jim Green used to love to tell. And then, David, do you remember the Jackie Gleason show? Of course. And you know, Jackie was a former passenger on the ship. He was he was photographed um, in her, uh, with uh, Meyer Davis, the who was the musical director aboard the ship. And Jackie had his own variety show as well. And I don't know if you remember, but it started with. From the sun and fun capital of the world, Miami Beach, it's the Jackie Gleason Show. And anyway, long story short, Jackie had two catchphrases, one of which was, how sweet it is. And the, the other is the one I'm going to co-op tonight, but I'm going to give it a nautical twist. Are well, you ready? I can't wait for this. Yep, tell me. Welcome, friends, to the SS United States Gala 68 Variety Show, celebrating the 68th anniversary of the record-shattering maiden voyage of the SS United States. And now, anchors away we go! Okay, I'll work on that. Uh, David, why are you wearing a tux? It's technically first night out, and I thought that you of all people would know that that's informal. Yes, of course. Well, I am covered in shame because, I mean, hitherto it was only Doris Day in Romance on the High Seas, her first ever film, when, of course, she dressed up for First Night Out. But since this is technically 
a gala, albeit a cyber gala, I thought that it deserved, you know, dressing up in the best tuxedos because we are here to celebrate the greatest and most glamorous ship ever to sail the seas. And just like a real cruise, we also have an auction in the Observation Lounge where you can bid on everything from cruises to fine art and original ocean liner memorabilia and more. And our shipboard mini lecturettes offer a chance to learn about the amazing SS United States and the many ways you can get involved in the effort to save her. And we're not just talking about financial help. The links to the auction and other sites we'll talk about tonight are all in the description below this show's on YouTube. So please wait and explore them after the show because you don't want to miss the galaxy of entertainers and notables we have lined up for you this evening in our first class theater. So Mark, over to you. Coming up. Thank you. Thank you. Coming up tonight, we have the fabulous cruise ship entertainer, Glenn Farrington, the spirit lifting harmonies of Nita Whitaker and her daughters, Sky and Lisi LaFontaine. And later this evening, the one and only Clea Blackhurst is going to rock the boat with what is likely the first public performance in decades of the SS United States very own theme song. But more about that later. First, you know, the effort to save the SS United States transcends politics and generations. So it's great to see young people lending their talents to the cause. They are the future after all, and the SS United States must be a part of that future. So I am thrilled to introduce one such young person, a true rising megastar and a quadruple threat. She's an award-winning singer, songwriter, actor, and she even co-stars in the wildly popular YouTube series, Jump Drawer Magic. Tonight, she's going to be performing a beautiful original song for us. So please welcome my friend and do applaud at home, I beg you, the multi-talented and outright phenomenal Akira Sky. Hi, I'm Akira Sky, and I'm so excited to be here today supporting the First Lady of the Sea, the SS United States. The song I'll be singing is inspired by all the things my friends and I are missing out on over quarantine. Laughing with friends until two in the morning, staying up late as the sun comes streaming in, campfires, pretty lights, summer fair, salty hair. Stay up way too late as if pouring till late night sleep. 
Wow, that is exactly the sort of young talent we need. And back in the 50s, the SS United States was, well, it was the place where young talent was discovered and sometimes entertained other guests. You know, seeing someone that young really fills me with inspiration and hope for the future. You know, this program tonight is all about the legacy, not only of a great ship, but of America's greatest naval architect, William Francis Gibbs, self-taught. But, you know, he didn't start out as a naval architect. Actually, his father wanted him to become a lawyer and he tried it out for a couple of years, but he could not take his mind off designing ships. And the first big project that William Francis Gibbs got a contract to do was converting the World War I German ocean liner known as the Vaterland into a United States ship. And at the time, it was the largest ship in the world. It was called the Leviathan. And of course, there were many things that were wonderful about it. It was a beautiful ship, but this was during Prohibition. And the Leviathan, of course, had no alcohol served on board. So not a ship that uh, I think I would have liked to have been aboard. You know, you can learn a lot more about the legacy of the SS United States and become a member of the Conservancy by clicking on the link in the description after the show. Are you stumped for a new gift? Or what about something you want to give a loved one at Christmas or Hanukkah or during the holidays? How about a gift membership to the SS United States Conservancy? To tell you more about the important work of the Conservancy, please welcome the granddaughter of the ship's designer and president of the SS United States Conservancy, Susan Gibbs. Thank you all for joining our celebration of the SS United States. These are challenging times that prevent us from gathering together in person, but it's great to see how the cause of saving America's flagship is bringing us together in such a creative and festive way. I'd especially like to thank the Conservancy's amazing West Coast chapter, led by the dynamic duo of Mark Perry and David Perry, and a shout out to everyone who's worked for months to make this event a reality. My grandfather, William Francis Gibbs, designed the SS United States. This ship was his lifelong obsession. It wasn't easy. It took him almost 40 years from initial pencil sketch to the ship's record-breaking maiden voyage. I'm not sure what my grandfather would make of the issues roiling the country today, but I am sure that he would be very grateful that his beloved ship remains afloat and that she remains a tribute to her namesake nation at a time when we are in urgent need of unifying and inspiring symbols. America's flagship showed the world what we could do as a nation when we really rallied People from all walks of life and from all 48 states brought this ship into being. Trailblazing women designed not only her top secret propellers, but also all of her interiors and much of her artwork. Workers from all races set a new standard for American made quality and craftsmanship. For nearly a decade, the Conservancy has built a global community of supporters to save this ship and give her a future. We're now closer than ever to achieving our goal. We've entered into a preliminary agreement with RxR Realty, a major New York-based commercial real estate firm. RxR is evaluating options for the ship's redevelopment as a vibrant, mixed-use destination and world-class museum. They're now in a second round of exciting design concepts and have initiated a nationwide search for a permanent home for the ship. The economic impacts of the global health pandemic are generating headwinds everywhere, but a bit of stormy weather is exactly what this ship was made for. As our redevelopment plans advance, we're also hard at work on a future shipboard museum. We're adding treasures to our collection every week we're planning an immersive experience that will be nothing short of breathtaking. And all of this takes funding. So I hope you'll consider supporting the Conservancy at this crucial time. Like other nonprofits, we've been hit hard by the global 
health pandemic. There are major expenses associated with keeping a 1,000 foot long ocean liner safe and sound as we advance our museum plans. We need your help to keep moving full speed ahead. The SS United States was ahead of her time. She was a global ambassador of American power, unity, innovation, and spirit. With your help, we are more determined than ever to save her. And now, it is my great honor to welcome a very special guest and friend of the Conservancy, actress Kate Burton. Hi, I'm Kate Burton. Legend has it my father Richard Burton and stepmother Elizabeth Taylor were among the who's who of celebrities that traveled on the SS United States in its heyday. I'd love to know when, but the record of their crossing was lost when the shipping line went out of business in the 1980s. Today, the Conservancy is working to locate those records for use in a dynamic, interactive museum display, highlighting the stories of all the passengers and crew who sailed aboard the ship. To learn how you can help, please visit ssusc.org and sign up for the Conservancy's free e-newsletter. Thank you. Wow. wow, just terrific. I hope someday, oh, sorry. I hope someday that we can find those passenger lists with Richard Burton and Elizabeth Taylor's names or the photos or something, but Kate didn't have anything like that. When I, and when I wrote to her to ask her if she would do this, she told me that she crossed the Atlantic with Dick and Liz on the QE2 when she was about 10 years old. And she also took her first steps on a crossing aboard the old Queen Mary. So in addition to being a lovely person and a brilliant actor, she's got some serious ship geek cred. You're right about that. We talk about the SS United States as a unifying symbol, something everybody can get behind. And you know, it's it, it, true. I remember being inspired by it the first time I saw it when I was a boy fishing with my dad at Newport News and I reached up and I touched the hull of that great ship. You know, imagine a country where every state is asked to participate in the construction of such an emblemic icon as the United States was, and one that would go on to win great national pride by shattering a speed record that was celebrated and very relevant in her day. Every American could rightly feel that they had played a part in this national triumph, and I hope they can again. You know, in 1952, on this day, kids were building models of the ship. They were building their own crystal radio sets so that they could get the latest reports of the ship's successes on her maiden voyage. Adults were waiting in the early hours at their newsstand to get the first edition of the morning papers so they could read the breathtaking accounts of the big U's daring do. She was a pop culture phenomenon in her time and especially around her maiden voyage. It riveted the country like the moon landing or the space shuttle of its day. And now, Let's see if we can tap into some of that 1950s excitement and get a ship to shore update on the maiden voyage. better way to celebrate the 4th of July than aboard this sleek new red, white, and blue Ocean Greyhound. Passengers are raving about the lack of vibration as we race across the bounding main. In her first 20 hours and 24 minutes, this stupendous ship has already set a new world record for liner speed traveling 696 nautical miles at an average speed of a whopping 34.11 knots. That's a jaw-dropping 40 miles per hour to you land lovers. No ocean liner has ever hit that speed for as sustained a period of time, making it an almost certainty that we'll soon be asking England's Queen Mary to hand over the fabled Blue Revand, the first time it will be in American hands in a hundred years.
It's no mystery by now that I'm a big old ship geek and an avid collector of ocean liner memorabilia. And my favorite ship to collect is, of course, the Belle of the Transatlantic Ball, the SS United States. But finding truly significant items from the ship can be challenging because most of her contents were auctioned off in 1984, then sold, pilfered, or pillaged in the ensuing years since. So I've quite literally been on a treasure hunt for the past three decades, and I've made some pretty cool finds along the way. And now I'm especially excited that something that started out as a fun little hobby for me has turned into something, well, substantially more important and a way to help preserve the ship's legacy for years to come. As the Conservancy's redevelopment plans advance, we're committed to creating an exciting, interactive, dynamic, educational, and entertaining museum and visitor experience that will celebrate the history of the ship itself, as well as explore mid-century design, art, technology, and innovation, the very things that made the SS United States so extraordinarily special. Thanks to the generosity of our supporters, we've been amassing an extensive archive of ephemera, print items, and audiovisual materials, as well as a collection of fittings, furnishings, artwork, and other important artifacts from the ship, including the entire suite of furniture from the captain's quarters, an illuminated wall panel by artist Charles Tissot from the First Class Private Restaurant, and a rare and famous fire-resistant Steinway Baby Grand that once accompanied evenings at sea in the ship's ballroom. The exciting prospect of helping create a world-class museum dedicated to the SS United States has given me a whole new perspective on my own collecting. I've realized that I've really just been the curator of these treasures in my lifetime and that many of the more important pieces I've enjoyed privately over the years now deserve to be shared publicly and preserved for future generations. So, I've gradually begun to donate some of my more important pieces to the Conservancy, such as the coffee table from the captain's day room, the personal scrapbook of Commodore Harry Manning, who captained the ship on her record-breaking maiden voyage in 1952, and two pristine original deck chairs and blankets, which I've donated in loving memory of my dear late friends Jim and Frida Green. And now, I'm adding this extremely rare two-volume set of maritime administration photos of the ship and her interiors taken just before she entered service. Everything from her swanky public rooms to her crew quarters, the galleys, the hospital, the cargo holds, these volumes are an irreplaceable treasure trove of visual reference material about our nation's flagship and should be available to students and scholars rather than, frankly, gathering dust in my home. Now, of course, I realize that not everybody has important archival material lying around the house to give to our museum, but there is one very simple, easy, and quick thing you can give us that will significantly help advance our plans for this state-of-the-art shipboard museum, and it won't cost you a dime. I'm talking about your input. We've been surveying our supporters to help guide our thinking as we create an experience that will celebrate not just the ship and her amazing legacy, but as I said, also mid-century modern design, technology, and innovation. A museum and a tribute that will have something for everyone. So we'd be grateful if you'd take a moment to share your thoughts by taking our survey, which is available on our website linked in the description below this video. But you might want to wait until after the show because you do not want to miss what's coming up next. It is now my pleasure to introduce my friend, the one and only Glenn Farrington. He's an extraordinary magician, he's a member of the prestigious Magic Castle, and appropriately enough for our show, he got his start performing comedy and magic aboard Premier and Norwegian Cruise Line ships back in the day. So don't touch that dial and don't blink. Friends, I give you the amazing Glenn Farrington. Thanks to the pandemic, I have one of the greatest acts in the world. No one ever sees me move my lips now. <laughs> Just having a little fun. Mark, thank you so much for that great introduction. I'd like to especially thank all of you in self-isolation taking the time to join us here. My name is Glenn Farrington, and I am a cruise ship entertainer. And the one thing I can tell you in all of my years of experience 
is for some reason when passengers are on land, regardless of how much education they have, once they get on board a ship, their brain turns to jello. And I only say that because every single week, a passenger will come up to me and ask me the same absurd questions. For example, what time does the midnight buffet start? The staircase over here, does it go up or down? <laughs> and my favorite is, how do you get electricity to come out all the way here to the ship? Well, we use a very long extension cord. <laughs> Those are the type of things I'm used to hearing. But I want to tell you about the one time that a passenger gave me some unsolicited advice. Every once in a while, even though I'm an entertainer, I help the crew staff with things that they're doing, and I love working an excursion desk. One day it was my turn, and I even made a little sign to put up front. I was so proud. Sure excursion sold here today. But then a passenger came over and said, I need to talk to you about your sign. I was like, well, what's wrong with my sign? I'm in marketing, and the one thing you learn about marketing, if you want to get the attention of a consumer, you use the least amount of words possible on a sign. I was like, so what should I do? Well, first of all, are you selling these excursions tomorrow? Or are you selling them yesterday? You're selling them, oh, today. Yeah, you don't need today. Get rid of today. I was like, all right, well, I guess that kind of makes sense. I'll get rid of today. So that leaves me with shore excursion sold here. He goes, well, I still have a problem with the sign. What's the problem now? He goes, well, you're not selling it by the pool deck. You're not selling it down the hallway. Obviously, you're selling it here. Yes, you don't need the word here. So I had to get rid of the word here. How's that? He goes, well, now it looks like you've already sold everything. I need to get rid of the word sold? Yes, you need to get rid of the word sold. All right, fine. So I'll get rid of the word sold. Oh my gosh, this is so... All right, so so how's this? Let me. Is this good? Shore excursions? He goes, well, well, what's the problem now? He goes, well, you're not selling the excursions to the ocean. You're not selling them to the ship. You're selling them to the... Sure, I get it. So get rid of... Yes, get rid of sure. All right, so get rid of sure... And that leaves me with a messed up sign, but at least it says excursions. And he goes, okay, that's perfect. Well, thank you so much for your help. And when he went away, another pastor came over and said, oh, this is the excursions desk. I go, yes, this is where I can find out about excursions. Absolutely. The excursions for sure. I go, see, yes, absolutely. Where do I go pay for them afterwards? I was like, oh boy. And you see, and that's why it comes in handy when you're an entertainer on board that can also do magic. Because when sometimes you run into problems, having the skills of a magician can certainly help out. Because then all you have to do is say the magic words, bon voyage. And if everything has worked out according to plan, now everything goes back the way it was in the beginning. Short excursions sold here today. <laughs> All right. Well, that was fun. Now, remember, guys, if everyone's home, you need to be self-hydrating during this self-isolation.
That was fantastic. I tell you, I'm here to tell you. No, you go ahead, Mark. Oh, I was just going to say, you know, Glenn is fabulous. And it's fun to watch him on screen, but it's so much more fun in person. And I hope that we can all experience that someday on a ship. Um, well, you, you know, that's exactly what I was going to say, because when I worked aboard the beautiful Crystal Symphony, which you can see over my shoulder, I remember seeing Mark. And I've always thought that cruise ship entertainers are a special breed because they not only have to be of course, incredibly talented like Mark is, but they have to be able to change at a moment's notice or sometimes the moment's angle of a deck. You know, and I want to thank Mark also for showing us the best way to be safe and get us all back aboard the cruise ships we love so much. Because when I worked aboard ship, that's where I was taught the importance of good hygiene. But you know, there's a lot of other things going on today and we don't want people to forget that there are incredible pieces of maritime history available today for auction. Mark, tell us about some of them. Well, we have a wide variety of items, David. In fact, um, we just got a late donation, which is really exciting. Peter Canego of midshipcentury.com, ship scholar and gentleman. Uh, he generously has donated a chair from the Carousel Lounge aboard the Island Princess, which you may know as... Of course, the love boat, or as sometimes I like to refer to her because she became famous there, the SS Charo. <laughs> Indeed, we all love Charo. Um, and you're going to hear more about the items that we have. There's memorabilia, other items that uh, from ships, uh, there's artwork, there's a bunch more, but you're going to get a pretty good list of that coming up in a bit. But, you know, I was talking about nautical expressions earlier, and I, I want to now introduce you to a dear friend of mine who still has salt water in his veins from his days on the bounding main. He's a fellow founding board member of the Conservancy, and every time we found ourselves in an all-hands-on-deck situation, he always managed to help us stay on an even keel and would never allow us to drag our anchor. He had the privilege of working aboard the SSUS in her glory days, and he's now my favorite nautical raconteur. Everyone, please say hello to the man I'm proud to serve beside, Joe Rhoda. Hello, I'm Joe Rhoda, former crew member of the SS United States. Uh, did about a hundred trips uh, on that beauty. Uh, I was elevator operator, bellboy, uh, that was first class bellboy, and chief steward's bellboy, radio bellboy, handle all the telegrams, waiter, and the last two years I was ship's photographer, which is a fantastic, fantastic job. I met some of the, the most notable people in the entire world uh, in many, many uh, uh, positions. Uh, she was, at that time, the most beautiful ship in the world. The finest engineered, uh, the fastest, the safest. Uh, we never had a breakdown in 400 trips. Uh, in on time, I think uh, some people may argue about that, but the company would say the ship was always on time, going through hurricanes. One time we stopped for several hours and turned around and did three to five knots because the wind was blowing so hard. When she stopped, we turned around and Commodore Anderson turned those screws. We used to do about 32 in cruising. I think we went up to 40 at that time. We got in on time. The ship now is not pleasing to look at because she's been, she's been in, tied up to a pier for over 25 years. But uh, all she needs is a new facelifting, a paint job. The uh, hull is 90, 98% intact. Uh, once those stacks are painted and the lights come on, uh, she'll be again the most beautiful ship in the world. I just can't stop bragging about her. Uh, I think anybody that sailed on her felt that way. She was magnificent. She was beautiful uh, from the day one, from maiden voyage to the, her 400th. Uh, she was always at the top, top peak. Well, uh, I hope you enjoy reminiscing a little bit with us. Uh, I'm glad you came aboard for this, uh, this short tour. Uh, 
keep your fingers crossed because it won't be a long time. We'll all be on board in New York City, sitting down at a first class dining room and the SS United States will have her second life. What a great story. I tell you, salute to you, Joe. And that drink will be on me when we sit down. You know, there's so many stories about the SS United States and her creator, William Francis Gibbs. A lot of people, of course, know that he created the SS United States, but don't know that he created many other ships. I mean, after the Leviathan, he went on to design destroyers and other ships during World War II for the United States Navy. But he also did some other passenger ships, especially for the very famous Matson Line, including their first real famous ship, the Malolo, which is Hawaiian for flying fish. You know, William Francis Gibbs was obsessed with safety fire, but also about what could happen to a ship in a collision. So of course, like all ship designers after the loss of Titanic, he wanted to design the unsinkable ship, which many people say is impossible. Well, not for William Francis Gibbs, because the Malolo that I was just talking about, besides being the last ship ever built in the United States without government money, completely privately funded, she was involved in a very bad collision early in her career, a collision that would have sank any other ship but not with a design by William Francis Gibbs. She settled a little bit in the water and sailed on her own power into port. So here's to William Francis Gibbs, the designer of what is, at the moment, the only unsinkable ship, along with his legacy, the SS United States still sailing. Here's to you, William Francis. Now don't touch that dial. There's still more to come with performances by the fabulous Nita Whitaker and her daughters Sky and Lisey LaFontaine. A rousing rendition of the SS United States theme song by the sensational Clea Blackhurst, plus special video salutes from Mercedes Ellington, Mr. Ocean Liner himself Bill Miller, and the one and only Miss Dolly Parton. But first, this important message. Hello, I am Topsy Tipton. Now most of you will remember me as those precocious triplets, Tilly, Tally, and Tina Tatlinger on the CBS comedy, Triple Trouble from 67 to 69. Okay, now listen, Patty Duke, remember her? She just played twins. So how she became a household name, I will never know. Plus, she was a teenager when she did her show. I was barely out of diapers, but whatever, whatever. And we did 152 episodes. One of them, you're gonna like this. It was called Tilly Topples Overboard. <laughs> <laughs> and it was filmed during the five-day crossing aboard the SS United States. Have you heard of it? Yeah. <laughs> we were crossing in the summer of 67, 68, so I don't know. I don't want to date myself. <laughs> now, I'm here to tell you that Universal Studios had a fire back in 08. It destroyed all my best work. And oh, so Okay, that's another discussion. All right. Memory Lane, as you know, is a dead-end street, so oh, here we are. Now, I was very flattered when the SS United States Conservationist Society of the, conser the Conservatory, I think, I don't know, it called to ask me to lend my star power to their little show, their little routine. <laughs> I understand they're having some kind of auction to raise funds, so let's get down to business, shall we? All right, okay, I'm gonna mostly skim this here. <clears throat> here we go, hello. Topsy Tipton here to tell you about the fabulous SS United States Gala, Gala, whatever, 68 variety show auction. Now, you're gonna wanna take a little click trip, whatever the <laughs> that is, but over to the auction site, but not until after the show. Stay, sit, listen. Now, you're gonna go over there, you're gonna take a gander at the fabulous goodies that can be yours for the right bid. Who wrote this? You know, you know how an auction works, right? All right, here's number one. Guided tours of the SS United States in Philadelphia. Ooh. Original works of art generously donated by noted artists, David McCauley and Robert Lloyd. 
A copy of Bill Miller's book, Silver Age, Passenger Ships of the 1950s. <laughs> Before my time, that's right. Signed by Mr. Ocean Liner himself. All right, and one more. Thanks to the generosity of Jim Polin and the Polin Group, we have this balcony cabin for two aboard the SS United States Maritime History Cruise on the Norwegian Breakaway in August of 2021. <laughs> well, that's a mouthful and I'm available. Okay, don't tell your wives. <laughs> oh, also, you know what we have? There's, there's just so much great stuff. I, I don't have time, okay? I have things to do. So don't forget to click the link in the description below the program. Auction closes 3 p.m. Eastern tomorrow, July 4th. Kaboom. And so have a happy Independence Day. And don't forget to tell them that Topsy, <laughs> Topsy, that's me, sent you. You can leave your cash on the table. <laughs> don't pretend you don't know what that means. <laughs> Whew, sweat. I swear, she is the definition of mid century modern. <laughs> I love her. <laughs> you know, David, I have to tell you, it is such a shame. It's such a loss to our community that all those episodes of Triple Trouble were especially the one that was filmed aboard the Big U, were destroyed in that universal vault fire. Um, you know, that's something that never would have happened to the United States. You know, that's right. Because not only was the SS United States considered unsinkable, she was virtually fireproof. William Francis Gibbs was obsessed with safety, but especially about the danger of fire at sea. You know, you, you'll hear people over the years say that the only wood aboard the SS United States were in the butcher's blocks in the galleys and the pianos in the public rooms. You know, it's rumored that William Francis Gibbs even wanted Steinway to create an aluminum piano. Fortunately, they denied the request, but they did create some beautiful pianos and it was made to be fire resistant. Perhaps the most famous of those pianos, the Steinway Baby Grand from the First Class Ballroom, was recently acquired by the Conservancy from Bob Schofield in memory of Michael Persico, who purchased the piano at the 1984 Guernsey's auction of the ship's contents. He's kept it safe all this time and maintained it until the Conservancy was able to purchase it. You know, there have been a lot of famous performances aboard the SS United States. You know, Mark, you and I have chatted about the time that Judy Garland went aboard ship and everyone was waiting for her to sing. But uh, alas, she took uh, all of her, you know, meals in her room. Didn't get her to sing, but of course, but one, you know. She came out for the dining room for a photo op. Sorry, talking over each other. No, Go ahead. No, no, that's fine. And, you know, the PR people, we know that photo ops are very important. But can you imagine what it would have been like to hear Judy Garland singing aboard that ship? Well, of course, there were other famous musicians aboard. And let us now welcome the granddaughter of one of the most famous, the granddaughter of Duke Ellington, herself a director, choreographer and stage and screen dance pioneer, Mercedes Ellington. fellow supporters of the great effort to save the SS United States, America's flagship. I trust you have stayed safe and well during the challenging times we've all been facing. Like you, I have a deep interest in this irreplaceable, unique example of American ingenuity and spirit. As many people have said, the SS United States was once and must become again a vibrant symbol of unity for our country. This ship represents the promise of our nation, diversity, pride, and the power of what we can achieve together. My grandfather, Edward Kennedy Duke Ellington, sailed aboard the SS United States. During his time on the ship, he accomplished simple but powerful things, as usual for him, in many various venues across America, Europe, Russia, and the rest of the world, except Cuba, during his legendary career. 
He used his music to connect with people from all walks of life. And whatever he had to say about any given subject, he'd say with his musical compositions and performances. He played on the Steinway piano of the SS United States, and that piano is now in the possession of the SS United States Conservancy. I believe we have an overly romantic relationship with technology and virtual reality. As they say in the song, ain't nothing like the real thing, baby. And this ship is the real thing. The SS United States represents our history, a very important, significant part of our history. Being able to actually see and experience her is an important way of being reminded of our past and its lessons. Real 3D history, not virtual history. In today's culture, we place too much importance on how quickly we can accomplish things, not on how we can do them or the quality of these communications and connections. However, the incredible planning, design, construction, and operation of the ship are completely different from that virtual mindset, and that is why we appreciate her so much. I join you in the heroic and challenging effort to save the SS United States in spite of all the divisions and differences we face today. Let's work together and rally around this unique ship, the last of her kind, to support this icon of the essential goodness of our country. Thank you to the SS United States Conservancy for their incredible efforts and to all of you for joining the cause. May the force be with you and long live the SS United States. Wouldn't you just love to go on a crossing with the people who've appeared on this program so far? Wouldn't that be fun? Oh. That would be the most fun captain's table I, I I can imagine, you know, and well, you know, they're all here with us next uh, October or August, I believe it is, that wonderful auction item donated by Jim Poland and Geisha and the fabulous folks of the Poland group, which you and I know so well, Mark. That would be a great yes. cruise. Let us, let's get them all together. Okay, sounds like a plan. Um, I love that. Um, on a geekdom scale of one to ten, David, uh, I think it's safe to say that you and I are probably a solid eight or a nine, right? But Absolutely. Our next, yes, but our next guest is probably about an eleven D million. So I'm going to let you introduce him. <laughs> well, thank you for that. I know who you're talking about. Of course, you know when I worked aboard a ship back in the the 90s, that's the 1990s, not the 1890s, one day on deck I saw a distinguished gentleman in a blazer looking out over the port of Piraeus, Greece, and he was picking out old ocean liners and he was telling me what they used to be. Well, of course, it was the one and only person that we have come to know as Mr. Ocean Liner playing Name That Ship, every ship geek's favorite game, the one and only Mr. Ocean Liner, Bill Miller, and here he is. Hi, I'm Bill Miller, and I'm here to congratulate the SS United States on the 68th anniversary of her record-breaking maiden voyage, when she became the most famous liner in the world, a supreme symbol of American genius, design, and engineering, the most popular ship of the 1950s, and still with us. And I'd like to take this opportunity to thank all those, Susan Gibbs and her team, David Perry and Mark Perry, all good friends who are trying to save this great, wonderful ship. She must be saved. Happy birthday, United States. And thank you, Bill, for all the work you've done to preserve all the maritime heritage of many ships, and especially the big you. You know, Mark, we've got some more entertainers we want to hear about. Who's next? 
Well, I want to tell you all about our next performers because I'm really excited to introduce you all to Nita Whitaker and her daughters, Sky and Lisi LaFontaine. For the past 20, 21 years, they've been my neighbors here in Los Angeles. And while most people can pop next door and borrow a cup of sugar, I much prefer to borrow a song. Now, when I asked them if they'd perform tonight to celebrate the ship, they eagerly agreed. And when I asked them to find a song in the public domain so we could avoid paying the big bucks, they rose to the challenge and chose a song that everybody knows but has never heard perform like this. They're going to be accompanied virtually by another dear friend, the incomparable Mr. Nick Fryman, who spent the last 25 years doing orchestration and other musical work aboard for the fabulous shows aboard the Holland America Line ships. It's a very shippy affair tonight. Now, <laughs> Nita, Nita won the 2019 NAACP Award for Best Supporting Actress in a Musical, which was called Born for This. She worked with legendary producer David Foster. She's toured with Andrea Bocelli and Chris Bode, and she also co-founded the nonprofit In a World with Books. Lisi recently played the lead of Dina Jones in London's West End revival of Dreamgirls, and it was a fabulous production. She also performed the principal role in Jeffrey Sellers' new musical Fly at the La Jolla Playhouse. And Skye is a lovely actor and emerging director, having directed four plays and a musical so far. And altogether, I am so tickled to introduce you all to my friends and next door neighbors, Nita, Skye, and Lisi. Take it away. Wow, Mark, you have the most talented neighbors anywhere on land or sea. Wow. Yeah, I feel pretty lucky. And you know, here's another thing. Nita is also a Southerner. So we bonded over that right away as soon as we met each other when I, when I bought the house and moved in. And you know, that's something you and I, in addition, David, you and I, we have the same last name. We're both from the South. And so we probably are cousins at some point along the way. Um, well, yeah. Go ahead. No, I was just going to say, you know, Alfredo always tells me that in, in Spain, everyone has a cousin. They don't understand this thing that we as Southerners understand, first, second, third, fifth cousins, half removed, that sort of thing. I mean, we are members of an exclusive club, you and me, Grits, guys and gals raised in the South. And of course, I'm proud to say that the SS United States, 
patriotic ship created in that place known to U.S. military for generations, Newport News, Virginia. She was born in our Commonwealth of Virginia. Yes, she was. And now I am beyond honored to introduce our next guest as a, as a Southern boy, or just really as an American. In fact, I have to kind of pinch myself that I actually get to do this because like the SS United States, our next guest is a legend in her lifetime, an American icon and a national treasure. Please welcome the one and only Dolly Parton. Hello, this is Dolly, and I fully support this amazing effort to restore the SS United States. It's a cause that we can all rally around during these troubled times, and I hope you'll consider contributing to this worthy cause. Oh, the queen of country music herself giving us an endorsement. You know, th that is better to me than, well, just about anything. I grew up in my grandparents, great-grandparents farm, listening to Dolly Parton, Lordy Lordy. Well, and now the SS United States has got the Dolly seal of approval. How about them anchors? Yeah, you know, that little joke reminds me of that line from Gemma and Prefer Blondes when he saw uh, Marilyn Monroe and Jane Russell walk by. Those girls can't sing. <laughs> <laughs> so, while we're on the subject of music, let's talk about ships theme songs, okay? Now, David, did you know the Queen Mary kind of has two theme songs? Hmm. I'd heard of one, but not the other. Tell me. Well, in my research, I came across Queen of the Sea and Somewhere at Sea, and I'm sure that there are some Queen Mary fans out there watching who will set us straight and make us make it clear which it one which one it was. Now, I'm sure. the Hanseatic had its own song, which was a Hanseatic, it was kind of a march sort of thing, and the Oceanic had its own song, Oh, Oceanic ship, oh, bella, bella, bella. okay, never mind. Um, anyway, uh, the SS France, who was a friendly rival of the SS United States in the twilight of the liner era, now she, of course, had the lovely song France. Now, I want to sing you a little few of the uh, uh, charmingly dated lyrics. Makes the old Atlantic Thrilling and romantic, France, France, gayer than champagne. It was a different time. Anyway, as we mentioned earlier, uh, the mighty SS United States has the song, David? First Lady of the Sea. Which was written and to was celebrate. Written. Oh, go ahead. No, ship's maiden voyage. We both know the story. <laughs> we do, but we're telling it together. All right. Now, now to perform this song publicly for the first time in decades, I am thrilled to introduce you all to my dear friend, Clea Blackhurst, who also just happens to be a true musical theater powerhouse. My love of ships is completely eclipsed by Clea's passion for all things Broadway and beyond. She's probably best known for her award-winning, and I'm here to tell you fabulously amazing, one-woman tribute to Ethel Merman called everything the traffic will allow, making her likely the only authentic Mermanologist you'll ever encounter and the only person I know who can always win at six degrees of Ethel Merman, as you are about to see. She is an actor, singer, and a comedian whose work spans from the small screen to the stage and beyond, and I am pleased to say I count myself among both her friends and her biggest fans. And now, accompanied by the extraordinary Ron Abel, here she is, the one, the only, the inimitably sensational Clea Blackhurst. Give it up. Hello. I am so honored to be part of this gala this evening and celebrate the SS United States. She really is the pride of this nation being the top of technologically, artistically, aesthetically. I know that she is a monument to our can-do spirit in America, and, it, and she represents everything that's great about us uh, in America. And I think this is a good time to just stop and acknowledge 
anything that's good. Certainly something um, as irreplaceable as an icon as the SS United States. So uh, I can't, I, I, I think it's terrific to try to like help her right now, get the glory and the attention uh, and dignity that she deserves. Towards that end, now I am a musical theater performer. I specialize and love the work of Ethel Merman. Always have, ever since I was a little kid in Salt Lake City, Utah, and they called me Little Ethel Merman. That's true. Strange, strange playground taunt, but true nonetheless. Now, I find that Ethel Merman has given me insight into a great business philosophy, and that is there is a future in the past. Every historian stakes their claim on this. And I find with Ethel Merman, I can get absolutely to anyone, anywhere through her career. Well, you might ask, what does that have to do with anything I'm talking about right now? Well, Ethel Merman was a passenger on board the SS United States at one point. Not only that, she stood in front of the Duke Ellington Band and sang with them. Can you stand that? It's amazing. So I want to uh, give you a moment to imagine what great moments like that could be like. For any of you who don't know, the SS United States has a theme song. There it is, First Lady of the Sea. And the music is by Meyer Davis, who it says was musical director of the SS United States, and words by Emery Davis. Somebody will have to tell me if that's Emery, Emery and Meyer are brothers or... Um, uh, brothers. I'm going with brothers. So, I thought it would be fun to take this out tonight, dust it off, and um, it's never been recorded. Can't find this on YouTube anywhere. So this will be a wonderful celebration bringing back the SS United States subtitle, First Lady of the Sea. All right, let's get, the, the, get this going. Um, yes, okay. Since Washington was headman of the nation and Martha was first lady of the land, Americans with justified elation have found first ladies to be grand. Now there has always been first ladies of the nation, but never a first lady of the sea. It's as though the people waited for a ship to really rate it, and now they found the key. Salute the United States, First Lady of the Sea. The first first lady of the sea, endowed with her country's traits, proud of her destiny, the SS United States. She's got New York style, California's grace, the Midwest strength and Texas space, the Southland's charm and the nation's pace. She's got freedom's form and liberty's face. So salute the United States, proclaim triumphantly. In a mighty voice, the people's choice, she's the first, first lady of the sea. <laughs> She's at New York style and California's grace, the Midwest strength and Texas space, the Southland's charm and the nation's pace. She's got freedom's form and liberty's face. So salute the United States, proclaim triumphantly. People all agree she deserves to be the
va, I tell you, she out mermaned merman. And you know, I don't want to disagree with Clea, but she said you couldn't find that song on YouTube. Well, you know what? Now you can. What a performance. Boy, it makes me verklempt. I mean, really, July 4th, I don't think you have a better song this year than that. What do you think, Mark? No, I absolutely agree. And it's going to be in my head now for, for weeks to come. Uh, this is walking out of the theater, humming the song, the big, the big number from the show. Um, I told you she was great. And I just want to say that, you know, yes, the SS United States on her maiden voyage, she went on, she took the speed record. She still holds the speed record and she's coming back. We're just, we're going to make that happen. And now it looks like it's time to thank our generous speakers and also our amazing performers, all of whom generously donated their talents tonight to support the cause. Because I hate to say it, David, but it looks like we're almost finished with engines for now. I know. Pretty soon we're going to pull in. Those tugs are going to pull the United States into her berth. But before we do, some thank you first to you, Mark my co-moderator inspiration, and since we're both from the South, I'm sure related. Um, also, I really want to give a shout out, just like any performer does to the band, the people we couldn't do it without, our technical sponsors, the incredible team at Beyond Picks in San Francisco. Thank you, Anita Casalina, for your generosity. Thank you, Oscar Gonzalez, for your incredible patience and talent. Thank you all, one and all, and especially thank you to everyone who has watched, will watch, and bid on those auction items, please. Be sure to hit the you links know, where you can take the curatorial survey, you can bid on the auction, you can visit our website to learn more about the SS United States, sign up for the, the newsletter, and also get a membership, get a gift membership, all in the links below the description. That's right. And the auction closes tomorrow at 3 p.m. Eastern. So that's noon here in California. And of course, the capital of mid-century modernism here in Palm Springs, where I am. Mark, my dear friend and co-host, is in Hollywood. So make sure to click on those links and take our museum and curatorial survey. So thank you, everyone, for watching. I, I guess there's nothing left but to say good night, Mark. Good night, Mark. But actually, I prefer <laughs> Bon Voyage. Bon voyage, ahoy. Tea. And we did it! In just three days, 10 hours, and 40 minutes. A new record for the fastest crossing ever. An achievement that will never be bested and a legacy that must be preserved for future generations. We hope you'll get involved in the ongoing efforts to ensure this irreplaceable American treasure continues a long and healthy voyage into a bright future. The SS United States Gala 68 Variety Show has been brought to you by the SS United States Conservancy and its West Coast chapter. To learn more about the many ways you can help, please visit www.ssusc.org. This is your announcer, Mark Tracy, saying thanks for watching and wishing you all fair winds and following seas. Salute the United States, First Lady of the Sea. Power in every line, she has beauty and dignity. The first first lady of the sea, endowed with her country's traits, proud of her destiny, the SS United States. She's got New York style, California's grace, the Midwest strength and Texas space, the Southland's charm and the nation's pace. She's got freedom's form and liberty's face. So salute the United States. Proclaim triumphantly in a mighty voice the people's choice. She's the first, first lady of the sea. New York style and California's grace, the Midwest.
West strength and Texas space, the Southland's charm and the nation's pace. She's got freedom's form and liberty's face. So salute the United States, proclaim triumphantly, people are.